fill your hand, you son of a... Uh, YouTube should allow Pilgrim. Pilgrim! Ah, uh, the Winchester 1892. Designed by John Moses Browning way back in 1892, and he did it in two bloody weeks. Now, the Winchester 1892 was a pistol caliber lever gun that was derived from the Winchester 1888 full bore rifle. This would go on to sell one million copies from 1892 to about the 1930s. This right here is a Rossi R92, which is a copy of the Winchester 92. This rifle has been sold since the 1960s and has been popular all that bloody time. It's very rare to find a rifle that has almost universal acclaim. Usually somebody's going to have a forum post saying it blows up. But everybody buddy, loves the Rossi 92, and with good reason. Now, you know the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Well, sometimes, um, even if it isn't broke, fixing it might not be a bad idea. You know the old adage, they don't make things like they used to? Sometimes, they shouldn't make things like they used to. Now, the Rossi 92 has had almost universal... Actually, no, not almost. It has had universal acclaim. But, for the longest of time, people complained that it was a fairly rough rifle, that the lever wasn't altogether that smooth, and that there were a lot of sharp edges, and that the wood didn't look all that good. Well, all of that has since changed in the year 2020. The rifle is very finely finished, very finely fit, and the finish is absolutely excellent. When I drove out the rear sight to add this red dot, I used an iron punch and it barely marred the surface. That is damn good. We'll get to this red dot in a moment. The rifle itself is chambered in 357 Magnum and that is the caliber I recommend getting this rifle in if you choose to get one simply because it is the most available. 44 Magnum and 45 Colt might be powerful but the ammo is very expensive and fairly rare whereas 357 Magnum and 38 Special is very easy to find. Now, this rifle is very, very light, coming in at about six pounds, ladies and gentlemen. This being the carbine version is also very, very short and very, very maneuverable. In addition to that, it has a nine round mag capacity and it fits nine rounds of either 38 Special or 357 Magnum. That is something that apparently varied in the past. Uh, it was said that you could only fit about eight rounds of 357 Magnum but with this 2020 model, it fits all nine. Now, one complaint about this rifle that has since been fixed is the fact that it has a safety. It's a bit rather difficult to see, but there is the safety. Now, obviously the original did not have a safety, but this was added due to import restrictions. Now, this might potentially be seen as a bad thing, but thankfully in the space year 2020, the safety has been redesigned to be very, very subtle. It's not obvious, there's not a big S and an F, and this thing is no longer silver. In fact, when you have it on safe, you can barely see anything at all, and when you put it on fire, all there is is a teeny tiny, and you can't even, oh there it is, teeny tiny red dot. Now you can buy a plug, you can remove this and buy a plug for it, but I would say that's unnecessary. In fact, I would go as far to say that this is actually an improvement on the original 1892. When you put this on safe, you cannot strike the firing pin with the hammer. In fact, as you can see, there's a bit of a gap between the firing pin and the hammer. That means you can potentially carry this with a round in the chamber, hammer down without any fear of an accidental discharge if something were to hit the hammer. And I consider that very interesting indeed. Because when it comes to a tube-fed gun like this, you definitely want all the ammo you can get. Now, speaking of reloading, this of course has the King's Patent Loading Gate. And this is actually pretty easy to load with practice. Uh, there was a Hickok 45 video on this particular rifle, and he had some difficulty loading in the first couple of rounds. The rifle hadn't actually malfunctioned, he just hadn't pushed it down far enough. It's really quite difficult to explain uh, in verbiage, but when you actually watch the video, you'll see I kind of push it down twice to get it into the tube. Now that is not actually a difficult reloading method, and you can actually reload this from the shoulder. Now, on this particular example, I of course have a red dot, which we'll get to in just a second, but also a cartridge carrier. This is actually a 22LR cartridge carrier, but it can expand to fit 38 Special. 
The sling is just a little strap. I thought it was actually a bit thicker than this, but this actually works quite well for such a small carbine, and this carbine is actually quite comfortable to carry. One other thing to note before I get to this, the receiver has been redesigned from the original 1892. Originally, there was a bit of a cut right here. This is much more squared off. That isn't really that big of a deal, and possibly uh, uh, strengthens the receiver a little bit, and at the very least, it definitely simplifies manufacture and keeps the cost down. So, with that in mind, why is there a red dot on a lever gun? Isn't that absolutely heretical? Well, you know what? The general likes to hit what he's aiming at. So one of the improvements that Rossi added to this particular rifle, and it's actually been on this rifle for some time, it's not just a 2020 improvement, is they drilled and tapped it for a scope mount. So all you gotta do to add a red dot or a scout scope is just tap out the rear sight. Now, the rear sight is actually not a bad buckhorn sight, but a red dot is of course far superior. Now, you can get scope bases from a grand total of one place, and that is Skinner Sights, making Picatinny rails of the Old West. Skinner Sights actually manufactures a wide variety of scope bases and peep sights and things of that nature for lever guns. And they made an absolutely excellent piece of 1913 rail that just screws in quite simply, quite easily. And I just love this bloody rifle because do you have any idea how difficult it is to add scopes or red dots to certain rifles? And Rossi simplified the process by just drilling and tapping four bloody holes. Think about this for a moment. To put a red dot on an FNFAL, you have to get an entire new top cover for the bloody thing. Where's this? Four holes. That's it. That's all. The side picture on this thing is nothing short of exceptional. This being so far forward, when you bring the rifle up, you almost immediately see that dot in your field of vision. You can pull off a wide variety of very accurate and very fast shots. I highly recommend that if you get one of these, put a bloody red dot on it. Yeah, it doesn't look that great, but you know what? You'll feel great actually hitting the target. This red dot right here is a sight mark red dot that sadly has since been discontinued. I'm glad I got it when I did because it is absolutely excellent in terms of build quality. It's only a $50 red dot, or at least it was a $50 red dot, but it stood up to quite a bit of heat coming off of this barrel. During the shooting segments, you're going to see me shooting a crap ton of bullets out of this bloody thing. And the rail heats up, and so does the sight, and this didn't lose zero at all at 25 yards. Really, this is a superlative sight on an absolutely amazing firearm. We are going to be shooting this at 25 yards, and we're going to be using lead round nose gecko ammo. And I'm going to be using a grand total of one tube of 357 Magnum, and it's going to be federal ammo of, shall we say, uncertain vintage, as it is very, very old. So with that, let's load up the old smoke pole and have some fun.
To say that this rifle is fun is a major understatement. There's just something about shooting a manually actuated rifle that you just don't get with a semi-auto. However, our speed wasn't that much slower than a semi-auto, that's for sure. I actually surprised myself at just how fast you can crank out rounds. Also, that ch loading gate here, while definitely stiff at first, really loosened up over just one range session, and at the end of it, I was able to reload it with the rifle shouldered. That is compelling indeed. This rifle, of course, was really bloody accurate, even at speed, and I was doing target transitions, no less. And I only had a few flyers at 25 yards. Remember, first range trip, I had never even held an 1892 until that day. My grandfather did even better using slow and deliberate fire. So yeah, you can hit what you're aiming at when it comes to this bloody rifle. This trigger is nothing short of pure sexellence. The proverbial glass rod breaking is what comes to mind. In fact, I would go as far to say that this trigger is actually better than the trigger in the Ruger PC Carbine, and that trigger was pretty damn good. Essentially, this trigger feels a little more consistent than the trigger in the PC Carbine, and while it's not as light, I happen to like the little bit of heaviness as it's not such a surprise when you actually pull it. In short, that trigger really does help in making rapid follow-up shots. Now, this rifle is also really quite durable. When my grandfather was shooting, he hadn't shot a lever gun in many, many years, and when he was pulling down the lever, he was letting the stock drop. You have to keep this stock firmly against your shoulder so that doesn't happen, and so you don't smack your stock into a concrete table, or the ground, or something else. Thankfully, this rifle is so well made, the paint on the butt plate wasn't even scratched. Damn good. We also had 100% reliability. Evidently at one point the extractors on these weren't very good. Uh, there was a lot of stovepipe jams. In fact, according to some sources, that's why this fell out of favor with Cowboy Action. I get the feeling it's going to come back in favor because they fixed that particular issue. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, I highly recommend the Rossi 92 Carbine, not just as a fun range gun, but also as a serious defensive firearm, either for home defense or as a brush gun, because you do have that 357 Magnum capability, and 357 Magnum is damn powerful. And speaking of 357 Magnum, ladies and gentlemen, I would love to know how old those Federals were because that was a lot of bloody smoke coming off of there. It actually obscured the target somewhat. Now, it certainly was not a black powder round because that had 357 Magnum recoil, that's for sure. But with all that in mind, this can work as a defensive long arm. 357 Magnum is really quite powerful and is really quite compelling. Yeah, you only, you only have nine or 10 of them, but that's pretty good, I should say, and you're not really just limited to nine or ten of them. That tube magazine is also pretty bloody good. You can shove cartridges in pretty bloody fast. So that mitigates the low initial magazine capacity somewhat. You could crank off two or three rounds, shove in two or three cartridges, and you're good to go yet again. I'd actually say, it's, it's going to be somewhat controversial, but I would actually say that this is a competitive carbine in terms of the magazine more than you would think because while it doesn't have the sheer magazine capacity of something that's modern like a PC carbine you don't have to buy a bunch of magazines either because you have the magazine affixed to the firearm and you have the ability to quickly load it as well and so it just kind of simplifies logistics in a way with all that in mind ladies and gentlemen I absolutely adore this carbine. It is just so much fun to shoot. And I'd actually say that if I had to choose between this or the PC carbine, this wins all day long. Yeah, the PC carbine might be able to hold, you know, or use 27 round mags or 100 round drums, but you know, this one's a lot more fun. And you can shove in those cartridges fast, so yeah. The Rossi 92 is gonna be here to stay for some time. And uh, John Moses Browning knew what he was doing way back in 1892 when he invented the Winchester 92. It is as good today in 2020 as it was back in 1892. And I cannot recommend it enough. And so I am General Otz wishing you good, Rossi 92, whatever, 
makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and if you can, please consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue bringing you this awesome content.